Hemopoiesis or hematopoiesis. This is a very big topic and a lot of us go into unnecessary immense detail. Here we shall discuss hematopoiesis in simple terms and allow you to recall and consolidate the key points. Now in the UK, the heme in hematopoiesis is spelt with H-A-E-M, whereas in the US, this is spelt as H-E-M. But they are the same thing. So let us define this. Hemo means blood, and poesis means making or forming. It comes from the Greek word poetikos, meaning poetic. So, hematopoiesis is defined as the formation of blood cells and platelets. It starts during embryonic development and occurs throughout adulthood, replacing and replenishing the blood. Another term that we shall use is hemogenesis. Genesis means the origin or the start of something, so it is the start of blood cell formation. Blood cell formation begins during the third week gestation. So what we have here is undifferentiated mesenchymal cells within the yolk sac. And around three weeks, these form blood islands that produce primitive blood cells. These migrate to the liver and spleen, which become the primary site for hematopoiesis from six weeks to seven months gestation. By that time, the bone marrow has matured and takes over, becoming the main source of blood cells. So now the bone marrow has become the primary site for hematopoiesis. In children and adults, in normal circumstances, it is the only site for hematopoiesis. At birth, hematopoiesis is present in nearly every bone. However, as the child grows, the active red marrow is gradually replaced by fat or yellow marrow. And as such in adults, hematopoiesis becomes confined to the central skeleton and proximal ends of long bones. Later, we shall discuss extramedullary hematopoiesis. Now, this is a pathological process which results in the resumption of hematopoietic activity in the liver and spleen. Let us now talk about the process. So, it all starts with the hematopoietic CD34 stem cell. This is a multipotent stem cell. Now, it's okay if you don't know what multipotent means. We shall discuss this in detail in our embryology series, but here is a quick recap. So we start with totipotent stem cells, these form pluripotent stem cells, and these differentiate into multipotent stem cells. The totipotent stem cells, which is the zygote, is the most versatile. They are formed quickly after fertilization and can become all the cells in the body. The pluripotent stem cells are formed around four days. These are the embryonic stem cells, and they can also form all cell types. However, they are less versatile than the totipotent stem cells. And finally, we have the multipotent stem cell, which forms later. These give rise to different cell lineages. Examples of these stem cells include hematopoietic stem cells, mesenchymal stem cells, and neural stem cells. The main properties of stem cells include self-renewal, so production of more stem cells, and proliferation and differentiation. So back to hematopoietic stem cells CD34. CD stands for cluster of differentiation. This is a protocol that identifies cell surfaces. The 34 is the number of transmembrane phosphoglycoproteins. So this is an important marker for hematopoietic stem cells. We don't need to know too much about this, but if you are interested in reading more, I've included a reference. So let us begin. We start with the hematopoietic stem cells CD34. Under the influence of several factors, this differentiates into the myeloid and lymphoid stem cells. Let us first focus on the myeloid stem cell. The myeloid stem cells further differentiate into four. These are the erythroblasts, megakaryocytes, myeloblasts, and monoblasts. Erythroblasts differentiate into red blood cells or erythrocytes, 
This is under the influence of erythropoietin or EPO. Megakaryocytes produce platelets. This is under the influence of thrombopoietin. Myeloblasts differentiate into granulocytes. You can remember the names of the granulocytes using the name Ben. So these are basophils, eosinophils, and neutrophils. The production of granulocytes is under the influence of granulocyte colony stimulating factor, or GCSF. And finally, monoblasts differentiate into monocytes. These further differentiate into macrophages, or dendritic cells. On the other hand, lymphoid stem cells can differentiate into natural killer cells or lymphoblasts. The lymphoblasts can subdifferentiate into T cells in the thymus or B cells in the bone marrow. We shall discuss this in more detail in the hematological malignancy series. The hematopoietic growth factors are glycoproteins. These regulate the differentiation and proliferation of the hematopoietic progenitor cells. Examples of these include erythropoietin and thrombopoietin. They all work via a specific receptor that stimulates a downstream signaling pathway. An example of this pathway is the cytoplasmic JAK pathway. The JAK pathway is very important in hematological cancers. Many drugs have been developed to target this pathway. Growth factors can be produced by stromal cells, for example, fibroblasts and endothelial cells. They can also be produced by inflammatory cells at sites of inflammation, for example, T cells, monocytes, and macrophages. Many factors can also inhibit hematopoiesis. Two important examples include tissue necrosis factor and transforming growth factor beta. There are still ongoing studies on the use of these inhibitors in the treatment of blood cancers. Please like, subscribe and share our content with your friends and on social media pages. Our mission is to develop need to know video content and question banks that remain free for your use. We are unable to keep doing this without your support. Thank you.